Sub broke for PvE, that's what we're going to be looking at today. I know it sounds weird, but we're still going to do it. Hello, hello everyone, it's Ego. Welcome back to the channel, and today, like I said, we're going to be looking at the Sub Rogue PvE support build for Wrath of the Lich King. Now, just a disclaimer, if you've come here to see if you can maximize your DPS and be top of the charts as Sub Rogue, I'm sorry, but that just won't happen. However, it is still a fun build to play and actually maximizes other players' damage rather than your own. So if you're looking to make your other DPS shine, this might be the build for you. It is still very fun. Fun. So as with my other guides, we're going to be diving into the talents, the glyphs, the gear, the rotation, and a bunch of other stuff about the sub rogue support build. Now let me know what you guys think in the comments about this build, because I've actually never tried it until the filming of this video, and I actually found it very, very fun. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you've tried this, if you've seen somebody else try it, let me know what you think. I am curious. So without further delay, let's jump right into the guide and start talking about this. Hey everyone, before we continue, don't forget to subscribe. It's free, it shows support, and it really does help the channel grow. Don't forget to also leave a like before you leave. Thanks everyone, let's get back to the video. So of course I want to start with a little bit of an overview about this sub rogue support build. Now as I mentioned in the beginning, you won't be topping the charts with this build, however that does not mean that it is absolutely garbage when it comes to DPS. You can actually still hold your own, especially if you master your rotation, which you will see more in the rotation section of the guide. Now, like I said, even if you aren't able to maximize your own DPS, sub rogue is a support build in this sense, so you are able to maximize everyone else's through things like trick of the trick. Trade. This build will allow you to keep Tricks of the Trade up so much more often than the other builds like Assassination and Combat. That's why it is a support build. Hemorrhage will give you an amazing damage buff to give to your party, and also you can keep things up like Expose Armor on your targets, of course. Now, like I mentioned, I haven't played this build very, very much, but for the little bit that I have played it so far, it actually is quite fun. I enjoy it. Um, like I said, I don't think it's something that I would necessarily be bringing into a raid unless I really wanted to go ahead and try it. Right now I'm Assassination. However, if your guild wants to and you want to, go ahead and go as a Subtlety Rogue. Because like I mentioned, it's fun. We're all here to have some fun on this game. So if you're looking to do that, do it. So enough chit chat. Let's start looking at the nitty gritty of this sub rogue support build. So let's dive into the talents of this subtlety support build that we have here. So we're obviously going to be in the subtlety tree. We're going to go five out of five in relentless strikes. We're going to pop one into master deception. That's just so we can unlock the later tiers of the tree. We're going to go into two out of two in opportunity, three out of three in camouflage. We're going to go into elusiveness, two out of two. We're going to grab ghostly strike. We're going to go into serrated blades, which will unlock our hemorrhage. And then we're going to go into initiative three out of three ambush two out of two we're gonna pick up prep we're gonna go to dirty deeds we're gonna go into master of subtlety we're gonna go into five out of five in deadliness then we're going to grab pre-med which will add two cobble points whenever we go into stealth so we can use this during our opener if we would like to then you're gonna go into sinister calling which increases our total agility by 15 percent and increases the percentage of your damage done or the damage bonus of backstab and hemorrhage by an additional 10%, so 5 out of 5 in Sinister Calling. Now this is where the support really starts to shine for the sub rogue with the Filthy Tricks. So, reduces the cooldown by 10 seconds and energy cost by 10 of your Tricks of the Trade, Distract, and Shadow Step abilities, and reduces the cooldown of preparation by 3 minutes. So the big part here is the Tricks of the Trade. So essentially what you're doing is you're shaving off a good chunk of the cooldown for Tricks of the Trade, allowing you to have it up on a target a lot more frequently, increasing their damage by a total of 15%. So this is going to be good if ever you have one DPS that clearly outshines the rest and you want to even push them further, give them that tricks of the trade consistently for that 15% buff. Then we're going to grab, of course, like I said, Shadow Step. We're going to go one out of one. Honor Amongst Thieves. So Honor Among Thieves is going to give us the extra combo points whenever anyone critically hits within our group. So that's just going to give us some free combo points to put out as much damage as we can as a sub rogue. Even if we're not the most optimal spec for damage, there's no point in not trying to optimize it at the very least. Then we're going to go into Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance is going to be what we're going to use for our burst damage windows. For example, from a Berserking proc, or if you're going into uh, Lust, stuff like that, you're going to pop Shadow Dance and you're going to spam Ambush. 
jumping into the combat tree. So we decided to go into the combat tree to maximize the amount of damage that we are able to actually do. Now, like I mentioned before, it's not going to be as good as assassination or combat, but we can at least try to optimize ourselves for damage so that we're not bringing our raid down. So... 5 out of 5 in dual wield specialization, then we're going to go down to 5 out of 5 in precision, giving us that extra hit, and then we're going to go to close quarters combat. Now, as a subtlety rogue, you won't really ever be using swords, you won't ever really be using axes, you're going to be primarily sitting with daggers and fist weapons. And then we're going to go into lightning reflexes, which is going to give us that 10% melee haste, and then the last point, you're going to go ahead and just dump it into malice for that increased crit chance. So that's going to be your talents. Now moving on into the glyphs. So the glyphs are pretty self-explanatory. You're going to want glyph of hemorrhage. Now because it's a support build, you're all about giving extra damage to your team. And the glyph of hemorrhage does exactly that. Increase the damage bonus against targets afflicted by hemorrhage by 40%. Then we're going to go into Shadow Dance, which is just going to increase our Shadow Dance duration so we can get more ambushes off during that little burst window, which is again maximizing the amount of damage we are capable of doing. And then we're going to go for, obviously, Glyph of Tricks of the Trade, which is going to increase the bonus damage, the threatened redirection granted by our tricks, and also give it a 4 second increase in duration. So we're going to be giving that 15% uh, buff for damage for an extra additional Four seconds then for minor glyphs you're going to go glyph of vanish which increases your movement speed while vanish now this can be swapped out easily for another minor glyph if you're looking to swap it out so what you could do for your minor glyph is you can always go for something like uh you know what there isn't really anything else out there <laughs> but you could go for uh maybe your glyph of distract if you'd like to which i already have here you can go glyph of safe fall if you want to replace this but i have my vanish but then you could also go for glyph of blurred speed if you want this as well, enables you to walk on water while your sprint ability is active, which you can uh, pop using pre uh, preparation if you want to refresh that. Or and then of course your glyph of distract. So if you want to swap out your glyph of vanish or your glyph of blurred speed for your glyph of safe fall, you absolutely can. Or you can go with the tr uh, the three glyphs that I have here. So that's going to be your subtlety combat assassination and then your glyph. So again, that's going to be your talents for this support build. So let's have a quick look at the gear for this subtlety support build. So the actual gear that you're going to be wearing is quite similar to the other specs for the Rogue. And same thing with the prioritization of stats. So your stat priority is still going to be hit, expertise, agility, attack, power, armor, pen, haste, and crit. You're still going to be going in that order. Now, your meta is going to be the exact same as everything else. Relentless Earth Siege Diamond gives you that agility and crit damage. Now, the biggest things that I want to talk about when it comes to the subtlety support build is obviously going to be your weapons. So, your weapons are going to be actually getting switched out quite often when you're in this build. So, you're always going to want a fast dagger offhand, and then you're going to want a big pumper mainhand. Now, when you're outside of your shadow dance and you're not casting ambush, you're actually going to want a big hitting fist weapon. This is to maximize the amount of damage that you're going to get from your hemorrhage ability. And then when you pop into Shadow Dance, you're actually going to want to swap into your daggers. Sinister Revenge is my dagger that I'm using right now because that is the best in slot dagger for your main hand in Wrath of the Lich King for Phase 1. But whenever you're casting hemorrhage and you're outside of Shadow Dance, you're going to be wanting to use a big hitting main hand fist weapon. For your poisons, you're going to be wanting to have instant poison on your main hand and deadly poison in your offhand to maximize the damage that you're getting with your poisons. From there, like I mentioned, you're going to be having pretty much the same gear that you have for all the other specs, which again, I will leave links in the description for those two other guides. And then, like I said, you're going to be putting in um, pretty much the same stats as you're going to be wanting for the others. So me, I'm going to be keeping my expertise in chance to get my expertise cap. And then I am also hit capped for my poisons. So with this being said, you're going to be putting in expertise gems to reach your expertise cap. And once you've reached that expertise cap, you'll be swapping out these gems for attack power gems. Now, if you don't need expertise on your gloves, go for attack power. Look up your best in slot in chance. But overall, make sure you hit your expertise and hit rating caps. So again, you're going to be having a main hand fist weapon for when you're just spamming hemorrhage. And you're always going to want a fast offhand dagger. And then from there, you're going to swap out your fist weapon when you're in shadow dance to your uh, big pumper dagger, which in my case is Sinister Revenge. 
Now, the reason I don't want to, again, have Sinister Revenge on all the time is because I want maximum damage coming from my Hemorrhage, and that's going to come from a higher damage uh, main hand fist weapon. Now, the macros that I'm using for this to swap is pretty easy. Show tooltip Hemorrhage, equip, and then insert weapon name here, and then cast a spell. Same thing for my Ambush. So again, Sinister Revenge slash cast Ambush, and that's going to be how you're going to swap out your weapons when you enter Shadow Dance, as you can see. So I have my... Um, lovely little ambush macro here. So that's going to be pretty much for the gear and how you're going to manage this support build as far as your weapons and your gear and your poisons. Okay, so let's take a very basic look at the rotation for this support build. Now I want to emphasize this once again everyone, you will not be topping the charts with this build. This is entirely a support build so don't expect to be pumping really big numbers um, but you could still at least have a rotation to maximize the potential damage that you can do, okay? So you're obviously going to start stealth. You're going to go ahead and not be like me. You're going to put pre-med on your bars. You're going to start off with pre-med. You're going to open with a hemorrhage, and you're going to put expose armor on the target to increase everyone's damage. You're going to do a, a slice and dice, and then you're going to continue to spam hemorrhage, all right? So as you're spamming hemorrhage, you're going to want to get your garrote up, or, yeah, your, your rupture, sorry, not your garrote. And then you're going to want to continue to keep your slice up. And then um, you're going to want to keep your exposed armor up. Now, doing it on the training dummy is going to be a little bit different than doing it in an actual dungeon or a raid. Because you will benefit from your talents in the honor among thieves. Which will give you extra combo points to throw out there. Now, a couple things I do want to show you is that when you're actually going to pop a rupture. If you see your shadow step up, go ahead... And I'll build, I'll build my combo points here to just give you guys an idea of what I'm talking about. So you're going to have your combo points up. Go ahead and pop your Shadow Step and then Rupture. Okay? Because that's going to give it the extra little damage buff that comes from Shadow Step, which increases your, um, by 20%, the damage of your next ability. Okay? So you're going to want to do that to maximize the damage that you can get from your Rupture. Throw in a Ghostly Strike here and there because it does do more damage than your Hemorrhage. Sure, it does cost a little bit more energy. But you might as well throw it in there because it take it off a of cooldown, right? And then when you're using your um, Shadow Dance, let's say I get a Berserker proc, you're obviously going to go Shadow Dance, use that macro to swap out your weapons, and you're going to spam Ambush, pop another Rupture, spam Ambush, get those combo points up, make sure you're keeping Slice and Dice equipped or on your character, and then you're going to continue to spam Hemorrhage. You're going to switch back to your Fist Weapon using the macros, okay? And then if ever you find that you have a surplus of um, combo points, throw in an Eviscerate. Uh, if Rupture is already on the target and you already have exposed armor, you're always going to want to keep Tricks of the Trade on your targets that are um, needing it. So that's typically going to be your top DPS in your raid. Now, building a little more on the rotation, you do actually have some decent burst windows that you can have with the Subtlety Rogues. So let's say you just had Lost popped or you just popped a Haste Pot. You can actually take advantage of your Master of Subtlety Talent, which will go ahead and give you an extra 10% um, damage for 6 seconds after breaking Stealth. So what you could do is go ahead and go into your um, Vanish pop that Master of Subtlety, start ambushing your target, and then immediately after that, go into Shadow Dance and continue to ambush your target. So that's going to maximize the amount of damage you can get in there. And of course, be sure to use those combo points on the Slice and Dice, Expose Armor, and Ruptures, and maintain your Tricks of the Trade. The rotation is all about supporting your fellow players in their damage, right? You're never going to be topping the top of the, uh, of the DPS charts in this build. Go Assassination or Combat if you're looking to do that. But if you're looking to really maximize the potential of somebody else's damage through Tricks of the Trade, through Exposed Armor, through Hemorrhage, which also gives a damage buff, you're going to want to go with the support build. Again, you might get a, you might get better results or you might get um, uh, guild placement, I guess. if you, you might get selected for guilds more if you're in combat or if you're in a, a assassination, that's a guarantee. But however, if you are looking to play subtlety and everybody that you're playing with is cool with it, go for it. You know what? Life's too short to, you know, go into a cookie cutter build, man. 
go for it. So that's going to be it for the Sub Rogue Support Build Guide. I hope you all found this quite interesting because I know I did. If you like the video, as always, drop a like, sub to the channel, and leave comments if you have any suggestions, questions, or even things that you just want to talk about, all things Rogue. I always love to hear back from you guys. Now, with all that being said, once again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I appreciate you so much. With all my shameless plugs out of the way, that'll be it from me, everyone. So once again, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.